How many babies have died from vitamin K administration? Zero. Zero. For all those of you who keep saying it's killing babies, there are zero baby deaths from vitamin K. None. So you can argue all you want, but there are no vitamin K related baby deaths. That's number one. Why is it needed? Well, because in pregnancy, very little vitamin K goes through the placenta. The baby doesn't make enough vitamin K and its gut can't get enough vitamin K from absorption because it hasn't established its own microbiome early on or even later on, and it's not getting enough vitamin K from mom's breast milk. So it starts with very little. It continues to have very little. And for all those of you that said, it's going to be in the breast milk, that's all that it needs. God made babies perfect. Yeah, no, that didn't happen. I'm a firm believer in God. I am devoutly religious. I got to start fasting in a couple of days from my religion. And I still know Categorically, scientifically, the babies are born sick all the time. Babies are born deficient in things all the time. Babies need help all the time. No baby is born perfect. It's just never happened, okay? No baby is born perfect. Babies need help. That's why they have doctors and nurses and pediatricians and NICU docs and bucket loads of equipment and procedures to help babies. So babies need vitamin K. Why do they need vitamin K? Because if the baby can't clot, the baby is at risk for complications. And we call these vitamin K dependent bleeding, VKDB. So there's three kinds. There's early, which happens in the first 24 hours. There's classic, which happens between sort of one day to about a week or two. And then there's late, which happens anywhere from that first week all the way out to six months with the peak incidence of major problems being between two weeks and eight weeks. So these are all babies being breastfed theoretically, but they're still having bleeds. The breastfeeding doesn't work, people. So stop screaming at me saying breastfeeding will fix it. It doesn't fix it. Babies that are exclusively breastfed with nothing else over the first six months of their life are actually at the highest risk for VKDB, proven in multiple studies because they can't absorb the vitamin K from the breast milk, okay? So stop screaming at me in post saying breast milk will do the job. Breast milk doesn't do the job, okay? So how many babies does this actually affect? Important question. Somewhere between 250 to 1,700 babies out of 100,000, so not a lot, will get the early kind, less than 24 hours. And for the classic and the late, it's somewhere between 10.5 to 80 per 100,000 babies. This is not a lot of babies. I'm not saying that it's a lot of babies, but many of them can have a stroke. So we're not just talking about minor complications, the ones that get moderate and severe complications. And I'm gonna give you some terrifying stats at the end of this. We'll have a neonatal stroke, okay? With all the complications, including death, that follow through from that. So then everybody started screaming, it's got aluminum. And one lunatic said, it's got animal DNA and human DNA, and it's got hydrochloric acid and blah. Okay, so let's just go through the actual list of ingredients. So there's two kinds. Wait, wait, I think it's a good time to share. Let oh, yeah. Call out all the people. That call them out. This is the time. <laughs> yeah. Tell your friends. Please tell your friends about this discussion. So there's two kinds of vitamin K that we give. There's one that has no protectants in it, like preservatives. And there's one that does have preservatives. And we're going to talk about each of those. So the one without preservatives has four ingredients aside from the vitamin K. So the same unhinged individual said there were 65 ingredients in it. There are not 65 ingredients. There are five ingredients. So the first one's vitamin K. It's synthetic. It's almost identical to the natural one. There's no difference in outcomes. No babies have ever been harmed from a vitamin K injection. You can argue all you want. You can say, I don't know what I'm talking about. There is not a single article anywhere in the literature showing any association between any adverse outcome and vitamin K, except for one baby in history that had an anaphylactic reaction and survived the reaction, okay? So there's no harm from vitamin K. It has polyoxyethylated fatty acid derivative. Sounds terrible, right? Except it's actually part of castor oil and it's derived from castor oil, which lots of people use for lots of natural medicinal purposes and value, right? So that's not harming anybody. It's got dextrose. Whoa, dextrose? Yeah, that's called sugar, people. That's nothing. And it's got benzyl alcohol in it, which can cause, admittedly, a little bit of local irritation when it comes into contact with your skin. It's used as a preservative, and it may contain a minuscule amount of hydrochloric acid for balancing. 
Now, is hydrochloric acid toxic? Because somebody else yelled at me about that one too. Your whole body is chock full of hydrochloric acid. It's in every cell of your body. And it's the main content of your stomach where it's used to break down stuff. So the minuscule amount used to balance the pH in this has absolutely zero impact on anything in your system, including in a baby system. Zero. Not like, oh, it could do something. No, it actually has zero impact. Now, admittedly, the one without preservatives does have some stuff in it that's a little bit odd. It's got polysorbate 80, which is in salad dressing that you're eating and also in makeup and all sorts of other products. So if you're eating it, it's not the end of the world. And it's got propylene glycol. So everybody's going to say, oh my God, there's antifreeze. Okay, no. Propylene glycol is part of antifreeze because it helps the antifreeze stay in the mixture that it's in. But it's actually just an emulsifier, which allows you to mix a liquid with an oil so that they can work together. And the vitamins are oil-based, so they have to be in an oil form. Okay, It's completely harmless on its own. It's been shown in European studies. For those of you that said Europe is better, it's been used in safely in North America and Canada and the U.S., Nobody's complaining about propylene glycol when used in very little amounts. And it has sodium acetate anhydrous, which is vinegar, okay? So before you all start freaking out about all this, the ingredients are safe. Now, somebody turned around and said, it's got aluminum in it. So I looked it up. The only aluminum in the vitamin K shot is actually coming from contaminant in the air or in the instruments that are being used when it's made. The actual amount has been measured as a maximum of 0.05 milligrams. The amount of aluminum in breast milk that a baby gets per day is approximately 0.1 milligrams. So you're getting 20 times the amount of aluminum in breastfeeding that you're getting from the vitamin K shot. And then before you all jump out there and say, well, it's a different type of aluminum. No, there's only one type of aluminum please stop freaking out and trying to make excuses for the crazy ideas that people have saying it's bad for you. None of the ingredients in the vitamin K shot are dangerous or harmful. I looked it up and I didn't look it up on chat GPT, which makes mistakes. I looked it up actually on PubMed and using consensus and a whole bunch of other apps to make sure there is no reports other than the alcohol causing local irritation of any harm. So then people said, oh, it causes hyperbenemia. I looked that up too. Exceedingly rare, no causal association ever proven whatsoever in the entirety of the scientific literature. So then people said, well, what about the side effects of cancer? It's associated with leukemia. You're killing babies. No, they disproved that in several studies years ago when it was first brought up and people realized it's simply not true. There is no association between vitamin K administration and any form of cancer. Zero. Why is it given IM? That's a good question. And the answer is because babies don't absorb it orally. I already explained that to you. It's not good through the gut. They can't absorb it through their gut. Despite all the crazy people that said babies are made perfect, babies' guts don't work perfectly when they're first born. If anyone that's had a baby that's got a lot of stomach acid or is a puker early on in life, we all know their stomachs don't work great. And as a result of that, they can't absorb the oral formulations very well. You have to give them a lot more and that won't protect them early on in the first 24 hours because they're born deficient. So we have to give it IM. And actually the oral is so not good that you need to supplement extra oral later on for patients that are breastfeeding because the baby's still not getting enough vitamin K from the breastfeeding. Okay. So even if you're a breastfeeding mom and you're doing your best for your baby and God bless you, we want you to breastfeed. I support that. 1 million percent, okay? Way better than formula, totally different discussion altogether. You're not giving your baby enough vitamin K, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you supplement, because they've tried that too, you're not gonna give your baby enough vitamin K. If you take it while you're pregnant, you're not gonna get it to the baby because it doesn't go through the placenta. They've studied that too. It just doesn't work, okay? Why is this all important? Well, we actually talked about the risks for the baby, bleeding in any type of surgical procedure, bleeding at circumcision, bleeding from the baby's head, which causes a stroke. So everybody's like, well, it's not that often. You quoted really low numbers. In 40 reports of individual cases and case series, they collected 1,486 babies, okay? This is readily available. I'll give you all the references if you want. These were all kids that had vitamin K dependent bleeding who did not receive vitamin K 
because their parents elected not to give them the vitamin K. Prepare yourself for these statistics before you jump out there and start telling me I need to lose my license because I'm supporting giving babies vitamin K. These are babies that did not get vitamin K and had a vitamin K-dependent bleed. 305 of 1,486 babies died. 20.5%. They're dead. Okay? So for all those of you that said, I need to go to hell and I need to have my license revoked, I hope each and every one of you is standing over the graves of those innocent babies, praying for them, praying for their souls, because the unhinged response is you decided no one should have this. We should tell everybody that they shouldn't get it. No, you're misinforming people. You're absolutely misinforming people, okay? Another 146 of the babies, 9.8%, had permanent neurological sequelae, including hemiparesis, which means half their body is paralyzed, seizures or developmental delay. And for those of you that think that was only in undeveloped countries, the same study was done in the US and 9% of the babies died. So for all those of you that thought that you know everything from reading a Google article or asking chat GPT, to tell you the evidence and then screaming at me and everybody else about how criminal we are and that we're on the take, I'd like to elucidate several points. First and foremost, I'm Canadian. I don't get paid for giving babies vitamin K. I've never been paid for giving babies vitamin K. There's no billing code. There's no fee code. There's no reward. There's no hospital bonus. There's no insurance company kickback. I don't get paid in any shape, way or form for giving babies vitamin K. We don't get that. Okay, so stop telling me I'm doing it for money. I'm not doing it for money. I get no benefit other than protecting babies, which is my God-given job. So that's number one. Number two, the scientific evidence is there. So please stop making up information and telling people that it's got this, that, and the other thing. The one person said it had animal and human DNA. She was talking about vaccines. She subsequently, after 10 different responses to me, acknowledged that she wasn't talking about vitamin K she was actually talking about vaccines, which I wasn't talking about at all. So stop going with the unhinged responses. Stop overreacting. Think before you write. Stop misinforming people.